Hi everyone, Peter here from Flow High Performance, and in this video, we will cover how to use isometric strength training to enhance sprint performance. Before we explore the benefits of isometrics for sprint performance, we first need to establish what isometric muscle actions are. Isometric contractions are when the muscle produces force without changing length. A simple example of this is when you push as hard as possible against a brick wall. You are still working to produce force into the wall, although the wall doesn't move. So how are isometric muscle actions involved when sprinting? When an athlete is sprinting at top speed, the foot is only in contact with the ground for a fraction of a second. So the muscles don't have enough time to lengthen and contract very much. Instead, what we see are near isometric muscle actions that stiffen the joints and allow primarily the tendons to stretch and recoil. The tendons act like elastic bands that provide an elastic recoil to propel the athlete forward. So if an athlete can become isometrically stronger in the muscles that resist joint movement during ground contact, then they can leak less force by maintaining more rigid joints and more efficiently use the tendons for elastic propulsion. Let's now have a look at how isometric strength training can be trained specifically for sprinting. If we have a look at when an athlete's foot contacts the ground at top speed, we can replicate the positions of the joints using isometric exercises. The first joint involved during ground contact is the ankle. The ankle is generally in slight plantar flexion during ground contact, meaning that the foot is slightly pointed down from 90 degrees. So when implementing isometrics for the ankle, we want to replicate this position. A simple isometric exercise for the ankle would be to set up a barbell in a rack with the pins above the barbell. The athlete can then stand on a plate and push the barbell maximally against the pins. A smith machine works even better if the athlete has access to one. The second joint involved during ground contact is the knee. The knee is generally in near full extension, but slightly flexed. When performing isometrics for the knee, we want the foot to be flat on the ground and have the knee slightly bent. The same barbell and rack setup can be used for knee isometrics, although the pins need to be set lower. The last primary joint involved during ground contact is the hip. The hip is generally in near full extension once again, but slightly flexed. When performing isometrics for the hips, a simple setup can be used to load a heavy barbell on the floor and position the athlete underneath the barbell as you would for the start of a hip thrust. Pushing from this bottom position generally places the athlete in the correct position for isometrics. So how can isometric strength training be periodized over time for maximum transfer to sprint performance? There are three general progressions that can be used to periodize isometrics. The first form of isometric strength training is resisting exercises. This is where the athlete resists heavy loads for a specific duration. So rather than pushing against an object, the athlete is simply holding the load and resisting joint movement. This form of isometric training doesn't allow the highest forces to be produced and is best used as an introductory phase to isometrics. Two to four sets of six to 10 second holds with maximum loads are a good general guideline for this form of training. For resisting isometrics, a Smith machine works best as the athlete will have no stability resisting on a single limb. The next form of isometric strength training is pushing exercises. This is where the athlete pushes as hard as possible against an immovable load. This is where the highest isometric force will be produced. Two to four sets of three to six second pushes are good general guidelines for this form of isometric training. And the last form of isometric strength training is switches. This is where the athlete alternates between legs during the exercise. Switches involve pre-activation of the muscles before they actually contact the ground. This means the muscles actually start isometrically contracting before they are actually under any load. This is slightly more specific to sprinting as the muscles tend to activate before ground contact. Two to four sets of two to four switches with two to four second holds are good general guidelines for this form of isometric training. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. 
Remember to subscribe if you haven't already.